Hello, Dumalang Sanwanani, South Africa. Welcome to Expressions. This is definitely the place for you to air your views. I'm your host, Jacqueline Mapala. I'm your host, Mgoli Siwa Wamasango. This is Koma from our headquarters in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. Now, over the past week, we witnessed young people under the age of 35 being sworn into parliament. We ask, will the presence of younger people in parliament translate to good governance? Now, that's the big question. Now, Lapikaya, we ask you to join in on the conversation in our social media platforms. Yes, Mgo, that's a very important question because an unprecedented move indeed. Now, key amongst those sworn in last week were the Feast Must Fall activists. Now, this is a movement that swept across South African institutions of higher education between 2015 and 2016, advocating for the removal of university fees and end in the outsourcing of workers as well as the decolonization of education. Now, this is a notable victory for South African youth who often feel like some of the issues are not being represented by some of the old parliamentarians. Well, Jackie, say in Jalogi, but are the young people's expectations from the newly sworn in young MPs realistic? Now, see expressions we took to the streets. Do take a look at this. Hi, Expressions. And I'm your street journalist for today. Namzanji, we are so at TVT College to ask the students on their opinions of the inclusion of the new members of parliament which are sworn on oath as a student. What change do you expect these millennials to bring in parliament? Since we have youth in, parla on, in parliament, it means during parliamentary issues that will be discussed and debates that will be taking place, it means they will be speaking for us. They, they know our needs, they know what we, what we want. The youth needs jobs, they need to quit these drugs, they need activities, so they should be spoken for by the young leaders. I think it motivates those who are at home, Baba Science School, then they will start to think or no, we have to go to school, this means it's possible in life. Those people, they know our struggle, they've been here before. So if they are not bribed, they will come back and help us, but if they are bribed, they're gonna enjoy themselves and get a nice life. They're not only there for themselves, but also for us. So the minute they know that our, our struggles that we have here, though our sisters, Pambi, they shouldn't be all about which now we have the seat in the stand and then they forget about us. So what are the common problems that students face here on a daily basis that you would like to see changed in the years to come? No fares to come to school, um, NASFAS not paying on time, uh, feeding schemes. I expect them to talk to the government for the government, convince the government to say we are here studying after what we want jobs and we want real jobs, permanent jobs. I have free education, so I to cancer us because like, if I have free education, the next thing, I will feel like I have to register, 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 I want to have free education, so like, if I have a global center, I have free education. It seems that young people on the street on the streets feel that there is a, lo a lot of confidence, I guess, that they can put in some of the young MPs that have been appointed uh, into our parliament. But of course, I've got some of them here in studio, and I'm so excited. Let me just introduce them. I'm joined by Luyolo Mpiti, who is from the DA. I'm also joined by Naledi Chirwa, who is from the EFF. And of course, I think a little bit later, we're also going to be joined by Itumeleng Ntsebo, who is actually the youngest MP that we have in our country so far. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to Expressions. Thank you so much. Hi, Luya, we're tired of you, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I never do this by myself. My co-host Mkolisi is obviously so, uh, he's manning our social media corner and bringing some of your insights on this also important conversation that we're having in studio. Liolo, I, I wonder if the reason why you're appointed as an MP is whether because we've just been giving you so much airtime here on expressions. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know. 
Now, Lady, maybe let me let, let me start with you. I think one of the biggest issues that are coming across quite clearly is yeah. the fact that young people feel like um, you guys being part of of, uh, of Parliament is is in a way a victory for them, it's a representation yeah. for them. But I want to find out from you in terms of some of the issues that you're going to to table. We're worried about towing party lines. What are you going to table as an MP? You know, um, we have our agenda as the EFF. You know, it was outlined in our manifesto and in many victories that we've pushed already um, in Parliament already. Like, for instance, the National Health Amendment Bill that will see to the creation of 24-hour uh, clinics in our communities. You know, early childhood development uh, centers in every ward. You know, free education. We are still saying we want free, free education. You know, we are calling for the freeing of Ukanyakagasha from jail and Boinkosi Kanyele from uh, house arrest, who are free for activists who still criminalized even today. You know, so the issues range from different uh, perspectives and dynamics. But I think what, what, you know, hits back closely to me as a young black radical feminist in the EFF is the issue of women, you know, who are still to date uh, the poorest in the country together with children and who are still primary caregivers of young children. You know, economically, socially, politically, young women are compromised. You know, as the EFF, it's our focal point to ensure that whatever agenda we push for centers young black women. When we talk about land, exploration of land without compensation, our primary beneficiaries are black women. When we talk about special economic zones uh, in rural areas, in rural areas, our primary, former, uh, our primary uh, focus is young black women. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, there's different ways to look at this, but essentially as a young black person, and even as a person who's going to be serving in public office, is that I think it would be great for us as the youth to just digress a bit from looking at representation as an aesthetic exercise. You know, what does it mean for, what, it doesn't mean anything if I'm just in parliament and it doesn't benefit the young girl in Tawu, and it doesn't benefit the young girl in Mami Lodi and in Deep Kloof. You know, what does representation mean for people who are on the ground? You know, does it benefit them and their livelihoods? If it doesn't, then it's as good as uh, what we have yeah. currently now. You know, because yeah. we thought we had parents and then our parents weren't taking care of us. So we're like, okay, What's going on, you know? So yeah. um, we constantly have to ensure that whatever struggles we have, we have appropriated, whether we are directly affected by those or not, we have to push for those to happen mm -hmm. and to have tangible results. Because yeah. essentially, you know, the duty of parliament is to legislate and to oversee, you know, and we must ensure that those duties are, are, are implemented to the best yeah. and the benefit of young people and young yeah. black women in particular. No, oh, amazing. Well, I mean, I, and, I, and I think that's what young people are looking to see, is to say they appointed you based on a particular issue that was important to them and you obviously have to remain true to that. Yeah. Uh, for, for you, Luyola, I mean, th there's, there's so much contention around the party that you represent and I think most importantly is the racial narrative around the DA. I mean, Helen Zilla was, uh, you know, we saw on Twitter where she said <laughs> that she regrets, uh, <laughs> you know, appointing um, a black leadership within the party. How do yeah. you as a young person, understanding the constituency that you represent, now change that narrative so that you're a legitimate voice of young people? Sure, look, I think <clears throat> the DA is coming out of a very, uh, a very bruising election. Uh, we've lost votes. Um, we, we, we have declined in terms of votes. So I think right now in the party, there's a lot of time for introspection and reflection on why did we lose these votes. Uh, but also importantly to understand what is the ideological framework of where we want to go as a political party that wants to speak for all South Africans and not just some. And I think that's fundamentally at the center of this, this conversation. On, on Helen Zilla, Helen Zilla's comments don't represent the values or the principles of the party. Um, the Federal Legal Commission is put in place for all the people that have uh, received complaints within the party. Uh, there's currently a case with the Equality Court um, against some of our members that have, you know, have spoken racially against black members and black people in this country. But I think what's important here is that as the DA we are looking at the center and consolidating the center. And consolidating the center means to say that we have a message for all South Africans regardless of race and that is the message that we are focused on driving mm. going forward. And, and maybe it's a question that's going to be directed to both of you. I mean, it, it seems like so much hope is placed in you as young people. But I mean, yeah. when we look at, your, at the numbers, I mean, the DA, you've got 84 seats. And maybe the question would be, how many of those are young people within, you know, below 35? And the EFF, it's, it's 44 seats. So uh, again, I think the, the issues that you, you guys are going to champion, do you feel that it's, it's too much pressure? It's a lot of... And, and, unrealistic pressure on you guys as young people to say we are literally going to carry the burden the responsibility of seeing some of the issues that have been neglected for so many years being addressed it's, it's a lot of pressure but it's necessary pressure 
especially because we've seen over time that people are holding public office abuse power and are unable to do things that are, should be done naturally just by virtue of being in public office. You're there to serve the people nothing else you know you're there for the needs of the people uh, and that's why we take the oath that we do to say that our first priority is to ensure that the people of south africa are prioritized so you can't divorce yourself from the struggles of the people and the struggles of the marginalized uh, i think it's necessary uh, pressure also because uh, people go through a lot you know our young people uh, young black women go through a lot you know these are daily struggles you go to a clinic today and there's no contraceptives and then you fall pregnant and then the stigma of abortion and then you ca you know there's different struggles that emanate from different uh, institutions that should be giving out service delivery you go to a high school in cape town which were protesting just a few days ago you know students are going to the streets taking to the streets young children teenagers to say that we are overcrowded in classroom you know there's young girls in Taung who don't get to school on time because there's no scholar transport for girls living in rural areas mm. and scholars just in generally mm. so these are these are legitimate struggles mm. that the government that the state can mm deliver to. Mm -hmm. Is scholar transport shouldn't even be something we should be talking about today. You know, we talk about IDP reviews. It shouldn't yeah. be a conversation we're having today to say, yeah. where are the street lights? The street lights should be there. Where mm -hmm. are the police stations? Mm -hmm. The police stations should be there. Where mm -hmm. are the clinics? Mm -hmm. The clinics should be there. Yeah. Where are the yeah. further industrialization yeah. zones? They yeah. should be there. These, yeah. are, these are common things. What we, sh what we should be moving towards, though, yeah. is an ideological change of South yeah. Africa as a whole. And, and I think for you, Loyal, I mean, we have to go to break. I, I want to understand, in terms of understanding the responsibility and the expectation that is on you, I think, in like 30 seconds. What is that for you? Definitely. I think Parliament is about legislation. It's about overseeing the executive and making sure that they held account to account. One of the ways in which uh, young people going into this Parliament can do that is making sure that their voices are heard in committee meetings, that when business plans are being presented by the department, that we are ensuring that within those business plans, they're speaking to young people mm -hmm. and creating jobs for young people. But more importantly, how are we using the space? Because members of Parliament can initiate bills in the House. How are we using that space to speak to issues like unemployment mm. that is faced by young people across this country. Mm. Well, I mean, it's up to you to decide. I mean, you've heard it hey, from Loyolo as well as Naledi. Do you feel that they're going to be championing some of the issues that are very important to you? I mean, it's up to you to decide. Make sure you stay with us. Um Kolisi is on the flip side of this. You are watching Expressions. I guess Pindas in being a listener, I'm getting you still watching expressions that's your that's your hashtag number one youth current affairs show. And I'm Tlanjik Sikwa. We are talking about young MPs who were recently sworn in parliament last week. Now our poll question, I'm Tlanjik Sikwa, we ask will the presence of younger people in parliament actually uh, translate to good governments? And that's the, the big question. And now to take this discussion further on this side, I'm now joined by from Wits University is Togozani Chilenga Butao, who's a political and as well as Itumileng Nzube, who's from the ANC and has been hailed the youngest MP. Good evening and welcome to Expressions. Thank you. Good evening and good evening to the viewers and thanks for having us here. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, Itu, I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, when we are Kalup Figu Yangena, and the first thing you call for is the privatization, um, of course, rather the nationalization of private schools. Why? Well, uh, I think it started in 1979 when Congress of South African Students said that uh, we, they want a free universal quality education for all. Mm -hmm. It then means that for you to have that, first you must nationalize all the private schools in South Africa. For you to have a free universal quality education for all. All right. Okay, so some of the things that are closest to your heart right now that you'd like to tackle for Abantabasha, who are sitting at home watching your expressions, what would those things be? Firstly, it's free education. I'm very much passionate about education. Uh, I think uh, government and uh, parliament must uh, announce and promote free education. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, parliament must also make laws and legislation that are more pro poor to black people in particular and young people in general of South Africa. Okay, Togozani, now, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there's an article that I saw that said that, you know, the only way that these young lions will be able to prove themselves is if they're able to hold their own and not just become an extension of the fifth parliament. Would you agree with the statement? 
I agree with that. And I think that the way they need to do that is introduce transparency and accountability, which are the key factors of good governance. So making sure that within the work of parliamentary committees, they hold people accountable for decisions that are made. But also whenever policy is being deliberated on amendments to bills, proposals of bills, they need to have a youth spin on anything that is presented in Parliament. So for instance, if we borrow money from any institution, they need to ask at what rate, how long, how much, because ultimately they are youth now representing the rest of us, but we will be those adults who will have to pay back loans, who will have to make decisions uh, and take action on things that have been decided on our behalf. Interesting point you're making on accountability. I mean, some of the big stories that came out of last week is how, you know, from the ANC, uh, Didi Mabuza deciding to move his swearing in and saying that, look, I need to hold back on this because I need to have some uh, issues that are outstanding with uh, the integrity committee and, of course, has been sworn in today. Do you think that we're starting to see accountability? Because even on social media, young people are talking about accountability. I think we are starting to see accountability within party structures, and that is important. However, we need to make sure that there's no political game being played behind the scenes. And I think that is where the youth come in, because they're able to articulate very quickly what it is that they stand for, and not have that fear or that history or that legacy that older members of parties have. And I think that's where the accountability will come from, where they'll be able to stand their ground precisely because they're not being held back by any history or legacy issues. Mm, and at the back of that, there was a tweet, uh, now that uh, Togozani has gone on that ground, there was a tweet here, one of our viewers wants to know from Naledi, you tweeted on Saturday that not inspiring at all, in quotation marks. People <laughs> want to know, were you referring to the president's inaugural speech? Were you at all inspired or not? I mean, I was referring to his uh, speech. I'm not a big fan of Ramaphosa, you know, especially because of the Marikana issue. Uh, it's something that I still will hold against him. I think we should all hold against him because they would still be alive had he not wrote that email. But nonetheless, besides that, uh, you know, there was nothing inspiring about what Ramaphosa said. Uh, he is unable to articulate the actual struggles of South Africans beyond just rhetoric and on top. He doesn't live in South Africa with us. You know, and for, for a president to be so divorced from the country that he's living in, that he's leading, should be alarming to all of us. The fact that he can't locate you in Mami Lodi, that he can't locate you in Deep Proof, should worry you as a young person, that you just, you just talk about me as if I'm an object and not necessarily someone that you're leading towards a uh emancipation so not you know? inspired at oh, all we'll okay, come yeah. back oh, to that right. we'll come back to that we'll come back to that because we're running out of time now lady right. i can see you going deeper uh well it do before i go to my voice note were you inspired do you do you of course would you agree would you not agree with my lady were you inspired by the president yes indeed we were inspired by the president Cyril Hamaphosa, and then uh, he made commitment to the south africans that uh, indeed the african national congress and the government is going to deliver on the promises that the ANC and government has already made on the people of South Africa. All right. Okay, at the back of that, Mbugeli, we did ask for you to send us your voice note for this week. Here's your expression. Please roll it for me. Um, yes, younger people will translate to good governance in Parliament. However, it will solely depend on how they were brought up politically. Do they understand politics as a platform to debate current affairs of the country and the future of the country, therefore? Or do they understand politics in, with the mentality of an anarchist, somebody who is just sent to cause trouble and disturb procedure and so forth? So it all depends on the upbringing of those particular comrades that are seconded to parliament or elected to parliament, rather. So. I think, yes, from, from an individual perspective, my own perspective and my understanding of politics, young people can translate to good governance in, 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 in Parliament. So it's actually possible. All right, as I continue, as I read my Facebook messages, uh, Togozani, I want you to answer on this. You know, we've seen how the likes of the EFF, you know, were the biggest destruction of the previous parliament, you know. Um, that we heard them saying that they will continue pretty much in the same way. What would your take on that be? I think that continuing in that way is assuring the electorate that they're going to keep Parliament accountable and it won't be business as usual. But what they need to make sure is that people don't get tired of the 
disruptions within parliament or stopping parliament or bounces being brought in, but actually making sure that in those disruptions, critical questions continue to be asked and people from the main party, the governing party, are still asked questions about how they lead and the way in which they do it. So if the disruptions lead to that end goal, definitely it will only be a good thing for the National Assembly. If not, I think voters will get tired. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this evening on Expressions. Mugile Lapekaya, we do see your comments, of course. Keep the conversation going on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Instagram. Expressions of Kubegala Pambili when we come back from this ad break. Remember to tell a friend, to tell a friend that the hottest current affairs show is now show. Back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Expressions here on SABC One. Tonight we are speaking about the young MPs who've been recently sworn into Parliament. And the poll question that we're asking you tonight is, will their presence in Parliament translate into good governance? Now, guys, unfortunately, we have to sort of wrap things up. Uh, and, and, and I think these are going to just be our parting shots. I think, Lira, let, maybe let me start with, with, with you. I mean, um, what is your plan, your personal plan as, as, as an MP? I mean, what, what kind of issues are you going to be championing? in terms of bills and proposal, but I think most importantly, uh, are you going to be captured? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, quite clearly my focus for the sixth parliament is, is jobs, uh, particularly dealing with youth unemployment in this country. In the next coming weeks, we've got an exciting plan that we'll be tabling in Parliament, the Jobs Act, where we're speaking about how we want to create jobs in this country. We're looking at SMEs, we're looking at uh, big business and how we can really encourage investment within the private sector to create jobs and get people working in this country again. I think that's the main focus that we want to focus on. But personally, I think more than anything is to represent where I'm coming from. I'm from the Eastern Cape. Young people whose realities of living as Lalini, they don't have those opportunities so I think it's important that that light, that articulation of their struggles must come to light in this particular parliament Yeah, and I think well. the biggest issue is how do we make sure that that whole rural, you know, ecosystem and infrastructure is pulled into the fourth industrial revolution. But I think that's a conversation well, for another, another day. day. <laughs> um, yeah. Naledi, I mean, I think when a, a lot of young people listen to you, you speak so passionately about some of the issues. And I think what, one thing that we sort of touched on is the issues around salaries. As much as you're speaking truth to power, how can young people be confident that you'll continue continue speaking the truth to power when that very power actually holds your well-being yeah. in, in their hands? I mean, that's a necessary conversation. Luckily, luckily for us as young people in the EFF, you know, the culture in the EFF has always been radicalism and speaking truth to power. The, the, the formation of the EFF comes from that. You know, we've seen our leaders being ostracized from power and being stripped down to the T because they will continue to speak truth to power. You know, and, and that won't change. It's going to continue. In fact, in the EFF, as young black women in particular we've had the most uh, platform to express ourselves and that is why our manifesto was the most progressive according to gender links in terms of gender issues and gender mainstreaming mm. you know it's because as young black women our uh, radicalism and articulation on issues was taken seriously you know we we're coming with things which are not necessarily in mainstream media or in conversations to say that actually oh my affairs uh, they must scrap this whole thing of male and female, especially if it has to do with the fact that it takes away the freedom of movement for trans people and queer people. You know, these are conversations that are way above the kind of politics we have in South Africa. Our feminism has been absorbed into, into EFF politics, even in our representation of uh, public, uh, you know, servants. It's 50-50. You know, we've got queer women in parliament. We've got women from rural areas. We've got, mm. uh, you know, young black women like myself. Mm. You know, so our radicalism is something that we've been modeling, you know, even in the formation stages of the EFF, yeah. we've got a good reference to say, but the CIC, you know, uge and it's something that we're willing to give, you know, to say that I will, we can't stop speaking truth to power yeah. because that is how we came about. Yeah. It's yeah. that thing of appropriating struggles and then forgetting the struggles that you appropriated. Mm -hmm. Then wh why did you speak on our mm -hmm. behalf? Why did you speak for us? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, if, I think if we give Naledi an opportunity, she'd probably take over the show. <laughs> but thank <laughs> you so very much. And again, mm -hmm. from Expressions, a huge congratulations for the position that you hold and I hope that you guys will definitely continue to representing the voices of young people. And of course, to our young 
youngest MP as well. And so, mm. I mean, goodness gracious, young people making big moves. Absolutely, hey? Jack, and we wish you all the best mm. in your journey, guys. You. And of course, we'll be checking in on you guys. Accountability comes first. Mm. Thank you so much, guys. So you well, Mbugeli Lapikaya, the big <laughs> question this evening, we did ask you, of course, will the, uh, the, the presence of younger people in Parliament translate to good yeah. governance? Now, about 70% of you said yes, That's and 30% said no. Clearly, there's confidence, I Jackie. I love that. I love that young people <laughs> believing in other young people. So I think we're definitely moving in the right direction, right? Absolutely, Wait, Jackie Mbugeli, thank you so much for joining us, Lapikaya. Now, Manili C plays us out from all of us here at Expressions. We wish you spectacular evening going forward. In Salega. Bye. I love you, I love you, I'm gonna see what